the ill-fated flotilla which attempted to sail to Gaza earlier this year. Down but not out, he joins us to discuss his latest plans. In the meantime, two land convoys, Hope and Viva Palestina 5, are also Gaza-bound. But what do the Palestinians make of it all? Before we talk to Paul, let's listen to the people of Gaza and their impressions. Even though many international convoys who tried to reach the Gaza Strip and break the siege and blockade over Gaza, and they were not uh, able to come here, but at least they were able to break, to break the silence on the siege. It succeeded in, uh, uh, in making a movement regarding media, but according to the level which pushes the international bodies to move and comply and, or to urge or to make pressure on Israel, to lift its siege in Gaza, I think these campaigns have not succeeded yet. But we still encourage these people to go on and complete their effort to break the siege. It takes a major uh, international event to magnify to everybody the serious effects of the siege. 80% of the population now depend on the humanitarian aid provided by the international agencies. That's what Israel to want, to increase the, deb the dependency on the humanitarian aid. People who are caged in Gaza uh, wish that the people who are moving these solidarity campaigns will pursue and will continue their movement because we have no other hope except their movement. Fishermen are stopped from going beyond three miles. It used to be 20 miles under the Oslo Accords. Now it's three miles that they have to fish. They're overfished, the, the, the sea near the beach, and this extra gunboats that we're seeing all along the horizon, we see them from the beach chasing the, the fishing boats. This is an intensification of the siege. We need to break the siege, not just in, in the products level. Move, access of movement, we need our freedom. We are not in need of such consumption of material. We hope uh, that the first uh, crime took you know, the crime that took place uh, uh, on Marmara uh, vessel uh, will not, uh, you know, deter those people from coming uh, or to come, in, to come to Gaza. The typical Israeli public relations machine that has been so effective in the past to continue this violence has, has now run up against a brick wall because people are starting to see that it's just lies. We are calling to revive the hope of the Palestinians. These convoys get some hope that we are Palestinians, we are not alone. We are part of this world. Well, those were some of the views of the people of Gaza. More plans are underway to launch yet another seaborne attempt at breaking the siege of Gaza. And Paul Larudi from San Francisco joins us to talk about this and other groundbreaking initiatives. <laughs> Welcome, Paul. So what are these latest plans that you've got? Well, you recall, Yvonne, that in, in 2008, when we went to Gaza, a lot of people thought we were crazy to, to think that uh, two small boats could get in. And yet we did. And we know the aftermath, both in terms of the land convoys and the, the, um, the sea convoys as well. But we don't want to limit ourselves to, to this kind of successful effort. We want to create new pressures on the situation in Palestine to, uh, to dramatize and to show the human rights violations. So we're considering an aircraft. We're actually making plans for such. And um, there are other ways to challenge the, uh, the human rights violations in, in Palestine, such as uh, getting volunteers to fly into the airport near Tel Aviv. Uh, to assert the right of return of Palestinian exiles who are, in fact, the majority of Palestinians. Well, there are millions of Palestinians who say they uh, have the right to return. How many are going to descend on Tel Aviv airport? As many as possible, but we are, we're sort of playing with the number of 100. There are 8 million Palestinians who are not living in their homes in Palestine. So you can say that there are 8 million who are, in effect, homeless. And even the remaining three million who are living in their homes in the West Bank and I Israel and to some extent in Gaza, they, uh, they're under pressure to leave those homes. So 
this is uh, an attempt to say, we're not going to wait for the United Nations to, to take action or for the international community to take action. We're going to our homes, and we're going to Tel Aviv Airport. And, and when they ask, what is your purpose of co uh, coming here, uh, we say, we're going to our homes. And of course, all of this is to be dramatized for the benefit of the world community so that they understand what, to what, what is happening and what the dynamics of 62 years of dispossession involve. You yourself have been beaten up. People died on the Mavi Marmara, of course. If you take an aircraft into Gaza, they'll, they'll shoot it down, a lot, might, a lot of people might just say. Would you shoot down Desmond Tutu or someone similar? This is the kind of person personality that we hope to have on board the aircraft. Uh, they, they said the same things about the boats. They're going to sink the boats to the bottom of the sea. Well, why would they shoot an aircraft down when it's, being, uh, it's been totally inspected by, by uh, uh, repu reputable authorities, when th there's plenty of press coverage uh, uh, of it? And it's, it's the same dynamic as, as with the boats. But is there much press coverage? I think uh, in the press here, certainly in London, they've forgotten about the Mavi Marmara and Gaza. In the Will news. they forget about an aircraft? We're going to publicize this, I think, in